Ladies and gentlemen, this is living among the Internet of Things. I am some guy or another. This is the awesome James Mason. I am I want to I want to interrupt for a sec. Actually, yeah. um, Kevin and Ashley, can you guys stand up for a sec? So, Kevin Berkland is has done an extraordinary amount of work organizing Linux Fest this year and doing a crazy amount of things. And Ashley has been doing all kinds of cool and crazy social media and advertising stuff. If you could give them a hand. To you, if they had been hit by a bus, we would not have a fest. <laughs> okay, moving on. So this is our other title. Just so you know how we're going to run this. Yeah. Um, and we will, despite the fact that the T in Internet of Things is supposed to be things, we will refer to them as IoT things. IoT things. Yeah. It, it's kind of like ATM machines that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Or compact disc discs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. CD right. discs. <laughs> All right, next slide. Let's rock and roll with this. Okay. All right, first and foremost, we recognize that IoT can refer to a metric buttload of different things. Stuff it could working be a watch. in. What? It could be a watch. It could, it could be a watch. It could be stuff in your car. We could be talking about stuff in factories and automation. We could talk about streetlights and stuff. We're mostly going to be talking about house stuff because. It's the most entertaining to me. <laughs> uh, really, that's the only reason why we're focusing on that. But we are. We're focusing on stuff you'd use in your house, uh, maybe like in a classroom environment, but mostly in your home. So I just wanted to kind of put that out of the way there and head off any potential question talking about the validity of IoT devices in, like, factories and whatnot, because I don't care. <laughs> so... We're going to go backwards through this because it's just more fun. So let's talk about some really, really bad stuff. Yeah, let's talk about really bad stuff. Ugly, in case ugly stuff. you didn't know how this was going to go, this is going to be like a lot of trolling, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 we're going to troll the entire IoT industry right now. And I'm really looking forward to this first one. Oh, man. Okay. <laughs> this is the Wemo application. From Belkin. This Belkin. 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 Belkin Wemo. Makes this. this is awesome. So they make a number of amazing IoT devices, such as the internet-enabled Mr. Coffee, the Crock-Pot, your home <laughs> heater, your humidifier, which is set via the internet to turbo mode right now. <laughs> I guess, raise your hand if it's, you think it's a good idea to leave home and with your coffee maker running, your heater going, your humidifier on, and... Yeah, yeah. It's so critical that you know how your crock pot is doing. Yeah, now I, <laughs> I understand. Everyone's left the house and thought, did I leave the window open? Did I leave the oven on, etc." So I understand being able to pull up your Android app and see, did I in fact do that? The idea <laughs> that you would just do that all the time and feel absolutely confident in your Android application <laughs> to turn on and off these devices from a distance is the most asinine thing I can possibly think of. Bullshit. It's total bullshit. Yeah. This man is a smart man. <laughs> so, luckily, now let's be real for a minute. There has never been an instance where an internet service or an Android application has been hacked. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes. That you know of. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> I moved Dink. You moved? Well, he was supposed to be in the encore. Oh, that's okay. Okay. So, moving on to slightly less ugly, there's Nest. How many of you guys have a Nest yeah. cam? Yes. Look at that. Yeah, nobody, I'm looking at nobody it. Nobody admits to it. Yeah, there's, there's more in here that have it. I know there is. Nest Cam is really cool, right? 24-7 full HD video. You can watch it on your phone. It records all the time. It saves it for 30 days. That sounds really cool, right? Yeah, could, That could never yeah. be a problem. It's, it's great. That's not bullshit. That's just, that's just creepy. <laughs> it's just straight up creepy. 
If you didn't think that was creepy enough, remember that that's under Google's terms of service, which means they can combine that video that you recorded with anything else and help it with ads. Your activity so. on any other sites and apps. Oh so if you wonder why you keep seeing Coke ads after you were drinking a Pepsi in front of your nest, now you know why. <laughs> right? so. This is why they took Don't Be Evil out of the motor. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Continuing the Google theme. Oh, okay, okay. Here's something that I, that bothers me a little bit. I hate this stuff. I hate every every single picture we have in this presentation. I hate in my core, but I kind of want this. <laughs> so, I, I this this little friend of mine has Alexa, right? The little yeah. Echo Amazon. Jerky, spy asshole thing. <laughs> I, she's my friend. She's his friend. I get friend. it. She this tells me bad jokes. This is so convenient. Hey, okay, Google, play me some stupid song or whatever. And it does it. Rad. I, that is rad. That is totally future shit. But, and it looks kind of cool while doing it, though I don't know what the hell the cheese grater sliced thing on the top is. I don't get that. But it is cool. And the part that bothers me about this is that I want it. If they just constantly made internet-enabled crockpots, I would never have an IoT device. I would be fine. But then they make this, and they tempt me, and I hate them for that. Yeah, but then you read that again, and you think, Yeah, 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 yeah. this stops. <laughs> this absolutely stops me. Every time I get tempted, I read the Google's terms of service. Because <laughs> that song, man, that song's going to haunt you. Oh, my God. <laughs> my God. Next. Oh, the tape measure. Okay, this is a tape measure. <laughs> how many of you have ever been somewhere and you're like, okay, how wide is my door? Can I fit this couch through the door when I move in here? Measure the door, and then you know how, how wide it is, right? And then you're thinking, did I measure it correctly? <gasps> did I leave myself a voice note with it? <gasps> Can I access that measurement from my Android phone later on? <laughs> I know I've freaked out about that a lot. <laughs> the tape measure. It measures it for you, and you can leave a voice note with your measurement and seek it with your phone. You know you want it. <laughs> <laughs> like, That's it, actually his hand in the it, <laughs> it's almost I mean it's almost like they're playing like a mismatch. Like they're just like, what random features can we come up with? Let's throw them in a hat. Products. <laughs> the, the button there actually controls a Wemo device. <laughs> it should. It should turn on your crockpot. One of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you measure something wide enough, it turns on your crockpot. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So there are some things out there that you know they're not that terrible. Which is bad. But yeah, they're just kind of bad. So. <laughs> This is Fitbit for your dog. <laughs> this is a real thing. It's pet fit. This literally, I mean, no, seriously. Clearly, you've every, never owned a fat dog. What? <laughs> All right. Does anyone have a problem if their dog is fat? Like, I had a fat dog, and that dog was so good at cuddling. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I wasn't about to put a Fitbit on my freaking dog. Like, okay, okay. Now, if I put a Fitbit on myself, and I'm like, you know what, I need to exercise more, and my dog, who's all fat and not getting laid, and it's just causing like <laughs> real emotional problems, so I take my dog for a run. I know how far we ran because I was there. <laughs> <laughs> Who is putting a thing on their dog and saying, go, exercise in the world? <laughs> like, like and what dog is going to like be like, oh, I didn't exercise enough today. <laughs> Man, I need to take more steps. I like, no want, dog's going to do that. I don't want to exercise on my own. I don't want to exercise with you. Right? <laughs> I, this, is, I, this literally makes no sense. So you can sue your dog walker. <laughs> oh, I see. So if your dog walker isn't taking your dog for enough steps. No, the, you, oh you, you put it on IFTTT and hook it up to the automatic dog feeder. So <laughs> your dog only gets fed after your dog walks around. So we're just evil bastards now. We're using technology to be horrible human beings. I, also, uh, we said it was it just bad. Like right? It's on top of a weird mouse pad thing. I don't know. Uh, anyway, next, next. <laughs> this is, uh, 
Okay, oh, okay. more pet stuff. <laughs> okay, this. This gets 20 hours of battery life. It is a cool dog collar <laughs> that gets 20 hours of battery life. It is a dog collar that does not last one day. <laughs> I just... The guy back here with the sign is looking at that, though, going... Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. To have some like that. And here's the thing. Cool little LED signs? Rad. I'm on board. I'm on board. It, it's, it's totally, like, almost steampunky. I'm kind of in great. 20 hours of battery life for a wirelessly controlled dog collar that does just displays an image. So let's say your dog gets lost. Well, that's great. From a distance, you, someone can see that that's, that's scruffy. <laughs> Hi, Scruffy. Unless that dog is gone for more than 20 hours since the last time. <laughs> Why? Why? It is ridiculous. Oh, and I just want to put this up here for a great success story because these revolves, they last forever. Oh, is it? Oh, no. This is a revolve hub. This got discontinued a while ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, just so everyone knows, this is Revolve. This was like, uh, what's what's the company that bought it? Uh, Google. Uh, no. Hub, right? Uh, no. Yeah, some, no. was it Google that bought them? I thought and Google then discontinued them? them? Yeah, yeah. No. So a bunch of people bought into this early IoT thing, uh, thinking they were going to control their lights and everything in their house with it, and then they got discontinued, and everyone was like, <laughs> and... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so from what I understand, they worked fairly well until the company decided that you're not allowed to use them anymore, and they I mean, literally bricked all the devices. They I just they that went was in like, and click bricked that them. That, I didn't even realize that. I thought that was like internet-connected Tupperware. Yeah, that's, why, that's why I put it there. It shows the temperature, it tells you how long it's yeah, been yeah, in the fridge. Yeah, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's garbage that yeah, you can't so actually So I can use. invent the internet-connected Tupperware. You could. Nobody said yeah, no one's done it. I'd run right up and get on it. Yes. Next. i got to show the next. Yes. Yes. <laughs> this is my favorite. Yes. Explain. Haven't you Explain ever been this. at the store and wanted to look at your phone and know exactly how many eggs in the fridge? So you know if you needed to buy like a half dozen or a whole dozen. Are, are there yes. some that have webcams in your fridge? Yeah, yeah. Yes. Yeah, there are. Yeah, yeah. This one merely counts But this is your only for you. counting your eggs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you have to put them on there yourself. No. It doesn't levitate the eggs out of the car. No. Actually, I don't think it even counts them for you. It just tells you which ones aren't there. So, oh, really? Does yeah. it just dis- you have to be able to count the eggs. So you have to load it up and count it on yeah. the screen yourself manually? Well, I mean, that, that, that happens. I mean, sometimes I don't want to open the fridge and look Which is at my why eggs. now it's $17 <laughs> at walmart.com. Yeah, you can so. buy this right now. This is real. This isn't, we're not putting up here things that are imaginary. This these is like quirky when These are right. actual IoT devices. Now, if any of you are worried uh, about the potential security ramifications of the government knowing how many eggs are in your fridge. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that, right? yeah, 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 yeah. That was a different talk. That was a different talk? Yeah. Okay, sorry. I'll move on from that one. Then. But yeah, this one. Amazing. But you then have to take them out of the friggin' cart and put them in the egg thing yourself. It's more work. It's actually more steps. <laughs> Don't you? Uh, Did, then, ha- and that actually, that might work. How many times? <laughs> how many times have you been sitting around thinking, you know what? My Christmas tree does not have enough IP addresses. <laughs> right? Right? Oh my god! If only, if only I could put it has every ornament. Yes. On my it's Wi-Fi. A, it, it is a device. You can buy these. Yes. What? This is this is this is jolly. I believe is what it's called. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Your jolliness has an IP address. You can literally say, "I want to change what's on my tree right now." Boop. Then theoretically, you have a Christmas tree. You're in the room with the Christmas tree. You're right in front of your Christmas tree, but you can't be bothered to touch your Christmas tree. <laughs> Luckily, you've got your cell phone. <laughs> and no, notice this is a really large ornament. Uh, yeah. Just to. Just to Look at it roughly here. So we're looking at an ornament that's roughly the size of a human hand, where the screen is a little postage stamp in the middle of it, <laughs> with an IP address. The question is, will it last through the Christmas season on the charge? <laughs> yeah, will, yeah how, will it last 20 hours on the charge? <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 so it plugs into a Christmas Eve tree light socket thing. Also, how wonderful would it be if a botnet of these? <laughs> <laughs> What if Christmas took out the internet on the eastern seaboard? <laughs> awesome. This one's one of my favorites. Um, you so, you know, we, we've talked about a lot of these things. A lot of things, these things are on IPs, and you start seeing the lights that are on 
Wi-Fi, so you don't have to use a hub, and that's great, and that's dandy. But I think the only thing, you know, we had the we had the hack of the DVRs, you know, where all these DVRs turned into this DDoS attack, and people, no one had any control. And you start wondering, you know, how many things do you want to have an IP address? And I thought, well, okay, it's Wi-Fi. How bad can it get? Well, these guys, they solve that problem. Because why put your lights on Wi-Fi when you can plug it into gigabit Ethernet? A new POE for your lights. So now you can run every light in your house on gigabit Ethernet. Are they Yeah, they're POE lights. Yeah, gigabit Ethernet for your light bulbs. Why would you want that? Like, what? Are we streaming 4K video to our light bulbs? <laughs> <laughs> like, I don't know, are they working on wireless light data transfer technology? Or something like that? <laughs> well, it's it's where they were with that. Yeah, so much. Okay. In, in their defense, this really isn't a home product. You know, this is for factories with millions of them. You but know, still, it's like, yes. how hard how hard is it to go to a factory and go click? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it just isn't. Okay, I'm cool. Yes. I'm cool. Yes. I, I take great offense at this because Nikola, <laughs> because Nikola Tesla was working on this in the 1890s. No, 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 no. Nikola Tesla was working on awesome things with wireless electricity. <laughs> Nikola Tesla was not making sure my light bulbs had an Ethernet connection and an IP address where they could attack me and take up my hospital. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nikola, I don't I don't think Nikola Tesla had a uh, Cisco POE <laughs> injectors in mind. <laughs> right. yeah, I'm guessing he didn't have that in mind. So, oh. uh, okay. So, <laughs> speaking of bad, we, we asked some people. So we were like, okay, <sighs> give me a second. <laughs> so we asked some folks, what what sort of setups do you have? Right? What what are the setups that you've got <laughs> in your homes? For IoT devices, I'm right? Just open that Google service and see if it remembers. <laughs> yeah, right. So, uh, so I asked a few people that you know you you might you might know to see you know what what is your IoT setup like, and uh, and they got back to me. Oh, come on, come on, network. Uh -oh. I told you you should have put this you in the slide. Black ball, though. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so you read that's not IoT. You're right. <laughs> if only this had as good a connection as the light bulb, <laughs> then we'd be good to go. Um, oh, this is just here. We go. All right. All right. 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 All right. We got it. 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 Holy moly! You have here. to read it with an accent. So, so Stuart Langridge. I asked. Did anyone ever know who Stuart Langridge is? He used to work over at Canonical. He worked on. Um, what was Canonical's online service where they had an online drive? Was it Ubuntu One or something yeah, like that? One, yeah. All right, so he was one of the chief engineers behind that sort of thing. Uh, so and then he quit, and that was that. Uh, so I asked him, what, what, what do you guys set up on this? <clears throat> I cannot do a Stuart language weird British accent, so I'm just going to read this. Um, I have one, one IoT device that is an Orvivo S20 remotely controllable power socket into which is plugged a Chromecast and a monitor. Fortunately, the horrible Android app that controls it will direct, will detect this socket on the local LAN and talk to it that way. It doesn't forcibly route commands through some random, probably discontinued server in China, and therefore I have added a firewall rule to my ISP router which blocks all inbound or outbound communication from that socket to the internet by MAC address. No, little socket, you should not, and therefore cannot talk to the internet, nor should anyone be able to talk to you. The reason I bought this particular socket is because someone has reverse engineered it enough to be able to control it from things other than the official app. I'm not using that unofficial app because the official app works. <laughs> but, but I could if I wanted to, and that's okay. The quality of the software engineering is a bit worrying, in particular the socket and the app discover one another by rather hilariously broadcasting UDP packets, which are the length of all the characters in the Wi-Fi password onto every available Wi-Fi network, and the socket scans for that. So I muddle along with this thing, but it's at the very bottom edge of acceptability yet acceptable. Uh, <laughs> still, it's there so I can turn on the telly without getting out of bed. <laughs> I um, Literally, he went through all that trouble, blocking routers, investigating into all of this, to replace the cheapest remote control humanly possible. He could have done this with a clapper. 
<laughs> and he opted not to. Uh, <clears throat> he is an extremely accomplished software developer. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> okay. And then there's mine. Um, how many of you guys are familiar with Wink? The Wink Hub? No? Okay. One guy. So, uh, Wink is trying really hard to do the right thing, but not doing a great job of it. But they're getting there. Um, and my house kind of looks like that. It's actually a picture from their website. But, yes, I've been winking all the things. Um, the thing about the Wink that makes it only merely bad is that every revision of the hub that they've made has, uh, has brought more services inside on the LAN and off That's of good. the cloud service, That's good. which is good. Yeah. And everything that it connects to uses standardized protocols. They don't make any Wink-specific things. So it isn't like you can only plug a Philips Hue light into a Philips Hue hub. I can buy any Z-Wave device or Zigbee thing off the shelf and hook it up to my Wink. Cool. I can take out my Wink hub and put in something else. Like, this is what I'm playing with right now, which is super duper awesome, and I can't wait. And that's going to replace my Wink hub very soon. So Good. this is a little Python-based app that runs on a Raspberry Pi that talks to whatever radios and can communicate with all those standard things. So if you bought standard stuff to put in your house and you wanted to do smart house things, then you could just swap the hub for something better. Yeah. So, I, yeah. It's That's only good. merely bad. That's only merely bad. <laughs> I, go back to the previous slide real quick, if you wouldn't mind. Uh, can I, mind if I ask you a few questions about this? Sure. All right. Uh, <laughs> lights in your house, are they connected? Oh, yeah. Okay. How do you turn them on? Switch. Uh, just a house switch? No. It's a separate switch. Like, what do you mean a separate switch? <laughs> like, I, I have little switches. Like on your that, phone or like On the phone separately? or on the wall. Yeah. So, you, can, you, can you just go to the light and turn it on? No. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> that is better, though. <laughs> where are we? Oh, good stuff. Good stuff. There is some good stuff. And, and regardless of where you are on, like, the whole Richard Stallman spectrum, there is some legitimately good stuff. <laughs> so, I think that should be an official thing, the Stallman spectrum. <laughs> so, you know? so there's, there's how Brian does IoT in his house. Yeah, let's go ahead and... <laughs> <laughs> They're in the A rate high on the Solomon spectrum. <laughs> so, really, nothing. Yeah, nothing. So, I mean, I have, I have computers, and then I've got some game consoles. And I unplug those a lot. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Don't you like, like, remote control things? Remote control what? My front door? Lights. <laughs> Lights Why would I need a remote control of light? Like, for example, I'm going to show you a very valid scenario for when you would need to remote control a light. Everyone watch this. <laughs> That's when you remote control a light, when you're not in the room. But if you're in the room, then you turn the light on. When you're not in the room, you don't air. need a light. <laughs> you don't need it. You don't need it. How many like, uh, people have, have their bedrooms that are this big? I've never seen one. I don't even know that Donald friggin' Trump has a bedroom this big, right? <laughs> so why not just reach for a light bulb or yeah. a light switch? Yeah. Just click it. But there's just rules. Like it. There's click click it. rules. Different rules. What do you I mean got different gray rules? rules. rules What's your rules? What are your rules? Give me well, your rules. like bedtime is pretty serious now. We don't mess around with bedtime. The lights just turn off at bedtime. In the kids' rooms. <laughs> so your house tells you when to go to bed. No, it tells the kids when to go to bed. Did, did anyone ever watch the TV show Eureka? Yeah. You, you remember the, the bunker house that was built in that that had like its own artificial intelligence that was like, yes, yeah, Sarah. No. And there was some serious shit that went down. <laughs> <laughs> they got locked in there. They almost got murdered like a dozen times. I mean, when it worked... Granted, the lights did turn on at convenient times. <laughs> but to be honest, I have never been in a room and felt, man, this light's just not turning on conveniently for me. <laughs> that has never happened. Never once did that happen to me. So uh, when you want it warmer in your house, you go out to the furnace and I just turn put an extra log I in? I turn an old analog thermostat <laughs> until it clicks. And the, uh, to be fair... 
the little temperature dial uh, really isn't pointing to the temperature it's going to make. It. <laughs> but over time, I know it's quirks. <laughs> and it works. And no, it doesn't have an IP address, I tell you what. <laughs> I don't even know that it runs on electricity, to be fair. <laughs> what is that thing? That? It looks cool. That is a particle photon. That's what? a really cool name. That is a particle photon. Explain this. So particle I.O. used to be Spark. Um, this is an Arduino-compatible device running on an ARM system on a chip. It's actually about the size of the end of your thumb. Um, and it runs a full Arduino stack, and you can run it on the cloud. And you can program in their Arduino IDE on the cloud and not have to compile and not have to run terrible, <laughs> awful, horrible <laughs> Java Arduino software on your computer. Yeah. Or you can if you want. The thing that makes this really good is, okay, first of all, that... That right there is a Wi-Fi antenna, so it's Wi-Fi connected, and That's it's cool. 20 bucks, and it's all open source. That. The software is open source, the firmware is open source, everything about it is completely open source. The, the hardware designs are open source. So it's a you good, can download it's a, it all off of it's GitHub. A, it's a good kit board to work with. So you can build anything yeah. you want with. It's 20 That's bucks, good. it's the size of your thumb, it goes anywhere, it runs off of USB, and it'll talk to anything. So it's pretty cool. That's But cool. it's a little bit more do-it-yourself. See, that's cool. I like right. a little hardware kit like that. As long as I don't turn it into a crock pot, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, that's funny because, like, the Keurig Smart Coffee Pot uses Is that built on that? But, you know, what are you going to do? <laughs> Not buy that. <laughs> <laughs> At least you know you could upgrade the firmware. <laughs> that's a good point. <laughs> All right. There's pluses. Um, Z Wave. Z Wave is really cool. Um, so Z-Wave is a consortium standard. It starts with a radio from Sigma Designs. That yeah. part is kind of stuck. Um, it's not perfect, but it's great. But the standard radio communication that they use is a published standard. Uh, there's good security around it. Everything that Z-Wave certified interoperates. You can use it with all kinds of other stuff. And unlike, sir, unlike Zigbee, which is another radio <coughs> standard, they also define the protocol, the way things talk. So everything needs to fit into one of their categories and behaviors, which means it's really easy to build stuff that knows how to talk to everything and work with everything. Because everything is either a switch or a sensor or a, or a, a gradient controller, like a dimmer. Sure. dimmer. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. you can buy a $35 dongle and run some software on a Raspberry Pi and connect to light switches that you can buy at Home Depot or Lowe's or wherever and do all kinds of cool IoT things. You sure can. Yeah. C Wave's cool. So the Raspberry Pi acts as a uh, local local server instead yep. of actually like a local hub. Yeah. Yeah. So that'll give you a point of contact that you can communicate with other things because the Z Wave is a non routable mesh network. And the other advantage of that is then all those Z Wave things don't have IP addresses and they're not on your Wi Fi. They're on their own separate non routable mesh doing their own thing just for making your house nice. That does make more sense. Right? Yeah, that, I know, as right, opposed to, to like giving fair. every light bulb in your house an IP address. I mean, don't get me wrong. <laughs> right? it's still a bad idea, no, but it does make more sense. <laughs> yes, ma'am. What if your neighbor has a bunch of those as well? Nothing bad will happen. It's fine. No, there's, there's, there's a security negotiation between your network of Z-Wave and a new device that comes in. So Wait. Theoretically, if you were trying to pair a new device and they knew you were trying to pair a new device for that couple seconds in time, they could probably steal that device from you and then control your light switch from their house, but that's as far as it goes. It's not like somebody out on the internet, though, because it's only got a few hundred feet of range, period. Yeah. Just, yes. to be, just to be clear about this, though, the very definition of a negotiation is that there is compromise. So <laughs> just, just want to put that out there. I, dictionary, I just... It's, it's more so. like the device and the hub are just having a hug to get to know each other better. <laughs> I don't want them to hug. I want to flip a switch and be done. So what uh, yeah. frequency does this thing operate on? Because I've noticed that, like, especially when you got a lot, when you got a lot of devices, like a lot of wireless devices, you can get that 2.4 and 5 gigahertz. Yeah, you can saturate it, up yeah. pretty good. And especially like fluorescent lights, I don't want to turn my light on and then have it unable to turn off because it doesn't, it's blocked out its own frequency. I don't know, but I've never had any interference with anything, and I have a lot of things going okay. on in my house. There's a lot uh, of radio noise in my house. My the same as his. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You could look up ITU9959 and find out. Okay. So, and it'll tell you. Um, an open HAB. Almost, almost. 
<laughs> Almost yay. This is another system that runs on a Raspberry Pi. It deals with a bunch of different radios and devices, and there's interconnected plugins to deal with 200 different systems. Yep. So you can, like, take over a Philips Hue Hub with this thing. Um, unfortunately, it's Java. So, <laughs> which just, like, the idea of, like, trying to run a Java stack on a Raspberry Pi just seems like asking yeah, for yeah, trouble. Yeah, yeah, that's pain. Yeah. That's a lot of pain. So... But hey, you know, I like to introduce pain to things that were you just light switches before. That's always <laughs> nice. Light switches, man. Switches. No circuit? Circuit. <laughs> Done. Next slide. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Does anyone who know who Jeremy Garcia is? All right. Uh, you know what the Linux questions, forums, or anything like that are? Okay. Anyway, yeah. all right, so the Linux Questions is the, the largest Linux-related forum uh, online. So I also asked him about his IoT setup, and he is a professed IoT person. Oh, please. Yay! Um, all right, my setup is in a bit of flux as I move to mostly local Z-Wave and Zigbee devices. Those that do require Wi-Fi are on a completely separate VLAN with no access to the internal network and pretty restricted access to the Internet. Um, he then goes on to make fun of John O'Bacon for a while. Uh, he calls it progress. <laughs> so so he's, he's a guy that's worked really hard to get his, his whole house as IoT'd out and automated, home automation. Before IoT was a thing, he was big into home automation. And this is a big deal for him. And he spends a huge amount of time on it. Um, and now, ostensibly, he can do all sorts of things that I can't do. Like, for example... <laughs> When we go on a trip, I turn on the heaters when we're on our way home. When we get home, the house is warm. Even though we don't know when we were going to get home until we were leaving. That is actually a pretty good point. <laughs> <laughs> Can I, a side story? I got uh, a better one. How about this one? Yeah, go for it. If I wanted to. Okay. If you when wanted to. When I walked to. in the door, the Imperial theme could play. <laughs> <laughs> That may be the only good thing I've heard so far. <laughs> let me and the lights could turn one. red. Let me let me let me turn <laughs> on that one a little bit. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Oh, uh, whoops, that's in the wrong place. It's in the wrong order. Well, we can we can hop to the next one. So we also asked John O'Bacon, who used to be the community manager over at Canonical, what he did. Uh, no. Whoa! Go back. Okay. What are you doing? All right. Uh, John O'Bacon is notorious for not having any security on any IoT devices. So we just and he said, I don't know. I don't even have IoT devices. Turns out he's got nanny mess. cams and all sorts of things. He uses tons of stuff. He just doesn't think about it at all. So we just took a picture of this and put his taxes on the front porch. <laughs> <laughs> we just felt like that ought to cover it. So that's there you go. That's probably John O'Bacon's setup, maybe. And that's the end. All right. Now, uh, they're supposed to be asking for an encore. Yeah. Oh. oh. <laughs> hey. <laughs> This is going to go the way it's supposed to. <laughs> so. Oh, is this? Uh, Ding! <laughs> so. Remember that Crockpot on the Wemo app? Yes! Isn't the thing that you love most about a Crockpot knowing the exact moment when it's ready? Yeah, absolutely. Like, nobody ever wanted to use a Crockpot because it was just there and ready when you felt like it, right? <laughs> this, is, this is a Crockpot. Your Android app will pop up a message when it's done that says the word ding. Ding! <laughs> ding. I just, I've never had an application that popped up a dialogue box that just said ding on it. I want that so bad. I just, I'm sorry. This amused me way more than it probably should have. <sighs> and then it was Jono. And then it was Jono. We didn't move back. <laughs> That's All right, that, yeah, yeah, yeah. But ding, guys. So, so, so if if you need an Android application that dings at you, well, more specifically, says writes the word ding on a message box, you should probably get a Wemo Crockpot. Ay, <laughs> ay, ay. Questions. Questions about whatever the hell just happened. <laughs> uh, let's go with Man in Black over there. Wait, what? 
Are you saying that IoT devices are turning into people? Yeah. I are we going it. full Cylon? Because I made this argument against him last night. <laughs> <laughs> so, what? So, What's okay. wrong with Alexa asking Alexa for a dirty joke? <laughs> <laughs> There's nothing wrong with asking an inanimate object for a dirty joke. <laughs> right. That is a wonderful, very human Except for thing the fact to that do. it comes back with something about mud. You know, because Does God it? forbid she'd actually tell me a dirty joke. Oh, uh, see, that's not very cool. I, honestly, I mean, I get it. People want their their stuff to be more relatable. They want it to be easier to use. But, all right, I, I'm about to say something that I find fairly controversial. I'm going to talk about the newer version of Battlestar Galactica for a moment. Uh, I prefer the 1978 version because I like good sci-fi, but... The new version of Battlestar Galactica, right? The Cylons became all people-like, right? And took everybody out. And the only way to combat that was to go all analog, to get rid of the wireless signals in the Battlestar Galactica and have hardwired wires going everywhere. So they you do want the school. POE lights. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't want the POE lights. Uh, but there's... There is a constant running theme in science fiction of we create devices, those devices become more human, and then step three is usually bad. <laughs> and that's, that's a constant thing that happens over and over and over again, and it's been happening for hundreds of years, that same science fiction storyline over and over and over and over again. And the resolution to that is always the same. Either humans lose, and it's over, end of story, or we travel back in time and try and rewrite history because we lost. Or we have to go all old school for a while. We say, okay, let's learn the lessons of the new technology we created, but let's go old school. Let's get rid of all these wireless connections. Let's string a wire over here, and we're almost unhackable. <laughs> and that's, those are the options in every piece of sci-fi I've ever read. Now, I'm not saying sci-fi is always right, but probably. Well, yeah. It's not like the Echo's going to get up one day and grab a knife. But how I much mean, does the Echo know about you? Nothing. It knows a shit ton about no, you. It knows when nothing. you want dirty jokes. Which is no, always. No. Amazon Web Services does. The Echo doesn't. Oh, but that's... <laughs> but that's <laughs> yeah, but Next. they just, they just ah. want to sell me more stuff. They don't want to sell me ads. They just want to sell me stuff. James... I do, and I'm really bad about that, actually. Yeah, it, it's true. Yeah? The, the Alexa, the, the typical pronoun for the Alexa is she. Is she sexy? No, <laughs> not even a little. Not even a little? No. Next question. <laughs> so, you're mentioning about all of these, uh, like, you can turn on your heat when you're coming home. Yeah. Could you, like, say, turn off your, could say somehow... Somebody get in and turn your furnace off so that your pipe burst when you come home after a vacation in the winter? No. No, it's not possible. No. It's not possible. <laughs> no uh, pipes. I, I, I don't think anything's no ever been hacked burst. before, so we're fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, come on, of course. Of course it's going to happen. No, of course not. it is. If it has control over anything, it's, it's, like, it's like the Wemo things, right? That little Android app. It's connecting up to an online service. That little Android app has, has control over like a bounty of countertop appliances <laughs> that can blend and heat and do all sorts of things. I, there is ways to do now, bad things that's why we said that was stupid. What? But that's different. Yeah, but how is that different? I... I we disagree on this topic. Yes. <laughs> we disagree rather vehemently. Yeah. Blue Man. More about the answer uh, to the frequency for the rest. It's uh, from about 860 to about 920. Oh. That's cool. that, all right, so, so it's on a separate frequency than what you're going to have Wi-Fi on or something like that. Okay. Cool. That's, that's good. I mean, that, that does make a lot of sense. Yeah. I've been from a previous slide in which you were portraying a house with smart devices. I've been wondering why would you want an IoT uh, washing machine, right? You do all the dirty work, you carry your laundry into it, and then you can't click a button when you're right there. Right? I don't actually have an IoT washing machine. That was just the, the graphic. <laughs> but they from, exist. From but but they yeah, exist. they do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Does anyone know it's what really, you really want? It's really important to know when your laundry's done and you're not there to do anything about it. It <laughs> <laughs> I, I, Yeah, I do. I, it baffles me. That you can 
<laughs> yes. That will be the number of appliances that are being connected that you just can't do anything about by being away from it. I, so it is absolutely baffling. Can anyone think of a good reason to have an internet connected washing machine? Well, your head went up fast. <laughs> <laughs> You've been jonesing for this sucker. It's, it's for future redundancy. So when the robots take over, ah, uh, done. You <laughs> man. <laughs> So, but you can just you just do that, and then you don't want your clothes sitting in the wet. It's gonna get warm and stinky. No. Uh, there's an apartment building that has like 400 people in it. Ooh. Shared by 400 people. So you can see when it's empty. So you can see when it's empty, active, or currently being used, or it's been sitting idle for a certain amount of time. The reason I say this is I've actually seen it. Uh, an apartment building. Uh, there's actually an internet site that what they do is manage. At, at, at the okay okay all right you know what I'll give you that because that actually has a certain value to it in your home though can anyone think of a usage you have one washing machine for your 1.3 children at home you what how do you it is fun to mess with people that's that's actually not a bad reason that's not terrible. does anyone have an actual reason what? To remind me to change my laundry by playing a video game. But it just stopped and went, eh, and you can I don't care that when I got my headphones on playing that. You can set a timer on your phone. Especially when it's in the basement and I want to start. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> you asked a bad question. I asked a bad question. <laughs> the reality is there's no one, there's no, there's no good reason. That's a stretch at the best. I didn't say it was a good reason, just a reason. <laughs> <laughs> All right, any <laughs> different questions done. before we head on out? Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Go out and enjoy the rest of the